Hi guys, and welcome back to a new episode with me, the Omega Enthusiast. On this episode, I will be restoring this 1940s Mido Multifort bumper automatic watch. The watch appears to be in great condition, the crystal is cracked, and will need a new replacement. This current crystal is also incorrect, as it is a bit too high, and the new replacement should be lower. The case has no damage and should clean up nicely. The good news is, the watch appears to be in working order. Hopefully this will be a smooth service or one with minimum issues that I can simply correct. Remember that a proper restoration on a vintage watch means you must avoid a case polish and refinish the dial. Mido Multifort are quite popular and affordable throughout the 1940s to 1970s. Collectors nowadays are more interested in the 1940s and 1950s model. Anyhow, let us get started. As always, step number one is to open the case back. Since this is a screw lock case back, I will use this friction bar to unscrew it. The third on the case back should clean up nicely once I stick it inside the ultrasonic cleaning machine. Inside the case back, you can see the uh, model serial number since the model number was uh, in between the lugs. This right here is a bumper automatic movement, and that is the bumper automatic weight. Looking at the movement, it looks to be in very good condition, and it's pretty clean. Before you can remove the movement out of the case, you'll need to remove the crown and stem out of the movement first. This right here is the movement holder. Without this piece, the movement will be very loose inside this watch. The case appears to be in pretty good condition, but before we uh, stick it into the ultrasonic cleaning machine, we have to remove this old crystal and also clean out the old case gasket. Never use a good tweezer to remove the case back gasket. One thing that you will notice, the original gasket on a 1940s watch is made of metal. Now it is time to clean the crown. Before you begin to work on the watch, you must put the crown back on. This way you can easily Align the hands and remove them from the watch. Once the hands are removed, it is time to remove the dial. To do so, you will have to unscrew the dial screw first. First thing is to remove the hour wheel. Then I use this tool to remove the cannon pinion. Cannon pinion is uh, the pinion where the minute hand sits onto. Then it is time to remove the set bridge. The set bridge covers all the setting gear, in, uh, which include the minute wheel and the setting wheel. Now it is time to remove the automatic bridge along with the automatic bumper weight.
Make sure to use the correct screwdriver, this way you won't damage the screw head. There's only one screw on the automatic bridge, so once you unscrew this one screw, you'll be able to separate the automatic weight from the automatic bridge. So basically, Without the automatic system, the movement becomes a regular manual wind movement. Right now, I am removing the remaining parts that connects to the automatic system. Before I continue any further, I must remove this gear right here. This is the gear that turns the sweep second pinion in the center. Before I continue, I must release the remaining power left inside the main spring barrel. This way, the balance wheel will come to a stop. Right here, I am using a rotico, which is similar to Play-Doh. It will allow me to remove any visible dirt on the movement. And this here is the bumper automatic spring. The wheel that I just removed is called the ratchet wheel, and this bridge here is called the barrel bridge. Now I remove the train bridge, which covers all the train wheels. There are four different wheels under this train bridge. They are the center wheel, the fourth wheel, the third wheel, and the escape wheel. Make sure that their teeth and the pivot are all in good shape. Time to remove the balance bridge in order to examine the balance wheel. Then it is time to examine the pallet fork to make sure it is moving freely and the jewels are in good shape. Since I am using a four station spinning type cleaning machine, I can put back the balance bridge and balance wheel on the movement before I clean it.
This is a old fashioned uh, automatic mainspring where you have a clip end separated from the uh, manual wind mainspring. So um, what I will have to do is once I have cleaned this movement, I will need to replace with a proper automatic mainspring. Time to put everything into the cleaning basket and it's ready for cleaning. The movement is now shiny and clean along with all the parts. The first step for me is always to remove the top and bottom balance jewel and lubricate them. I do have a set of automatic oiler, but I do prefer to use the old style oiler as I'm more uh, used to it. It is recommended that you use a good quality tweezer with a good pointy tip. Next, I will need to lubricate the two jewels on the pallet fork. To assemble the watch back, you are basically going reverse from how you strip it down. Before you screw the train bridge back on, give the center wheel a slight touch to make sure the balance wheel is spinning. This way you know that the train wheel are properly set.
As I mentioned earlier, I will have to replace the old mainspring with this new one. Make sure that the movement caliber matches. I use three different types of lubrication. One is, is only used for the pallet fork. The other one will be used for the train system and the cap jewels on the balance wheel. And the last lubrication that I use is for the mainspring and all other gears. Please note that I am making this video to show you guys how I would normally restore such a watch. If you're looking for a video to teach you how to become a watchmaker, I recommend that you should take a course and also learn one-on-one -on -one in person with a watchmaker. I hope you guys are enjoying my video. You can always support my work on Patreon. The link is in the description box below. Make sure to hit on that thumbs up below to support this channel. And if you have not yet subscribed, please do so by clicking on that subscribe button. This here that I am lubricating is called the crown wheel, which is connected to the ratchet wheel. And below the crown wheel is where the uh, clutch wheel and the winding wheel are located. When you wind the crown, the crown will connect to the winding wheel, which connects to the uh, crown wheel above. And then the crown wheel will transfer that energies to the uh, ratchet wheel. And the ratchet wheel will wind the mainspring barrel below which winds the mainspring and that is how the train bridge will start and the balance wheel will begin to spin.
please understand that it is very difficult for me to repair the watch from a distance while filming. Because in reality, I will have to be sitting up close and all that you will see will be the back of my head. Please share this video to your friends or colleagues uh, and if you have any question or comment please leave them in the comment section below. Once I am done with assembling the balance eye, it is time to turn it over to assemble everything on the dial side.
When I clean such a dial, I will try to avoid touching any of the luminous number. Gently clean the hands first before you set them back on to the movement. And always use a hand setting tool to properly set the hands. Notice the sweep second hand is ticking instead of sweeping. That is uh, an issue that you will have to correct. This issue is very common on center second watches and it's very simple to fix. All you have to do is first remove the uh, automatic system and then that clip that holds down the sweep second pinion just need to uh, adjust it a little bit and that will solve this issue. So this clip here, just give it a slight uh, bend and that will be enough to solve the problem. After cleaning the case in the ultrasonic cleaning machine, it looks new and shiny. Testing the new case back gasket to make sure that it sits correctly. And now it's time to install a brand new low dome crystal. Since the crown does not have a crown gasket, the gasket is actually located inside this case tube. For additional moisture protection, you can always add lubrication on the crown itself. This lubrication can only be applied onto crown, case back, and pushers.
That's the end of this video. If you guys enjoy watching it, please support the channel by hitting on that thumbs up button below and do not forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any of my future episodes. You can also support my work on Patreon. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comment section below. My website and Instagram links are also in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.